Viterra United Have your say in the way we play Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of TimCast. You will see on the screen, I hope, that we have a special guest today. It's Martino from the Proper Football Division, um, from our friends at 1.37pm on the front of the jersey. There you go. Um, Martino, welcome to TimCast. Welcome. Uh, for, well, actually, well, I am welcome. Um yeah, I don't have my jersey just yet. I was gonna, I was gonna show it up. They're so nice um, because over here in the states, they're eerily similar to LAFC, where Gareth Bale just signed. So, I mean, I, I think they're beautiful, and I can't wait to get my hands on them. It's that U.S. postal system, Martino, you know, that's probably the hold up. We uh, everyone... probably one of my friends works for them, and he's he's horrendous, so it makes sense. <laughs> uh, if you're watching Martino's friend. Um, it's not a that's not the opinion of you Terry United, but we're sure you're you're lovely. Um Tim is in the house, obviously. The Oracle of Futari United. That's the name that I've given you now, Tim. Just mm. thank you, thank you. What I like to say, Martino, what Tim doesn't know about Futari United is not worth knowing. Um, he is the, the man in the know, he's very close. I don't give me that face. Tim, Tim pulled a face there as if to say, I'm not sure about that, but that is categorically yeah, true. I, I, I am close, but the man in the know, we'll, we'll wait and see. There's no fake news on, on Tim Cast, Tim. So uh, that, that is the straight up truth. So let's start then. We haven't done one of these. Uh, we haven't done a Tim Cast since the test, the last test game against Bangkok FC, which we won 4-2. Played a team, Martino, that was four leagues ahead of us, which is quite incredible, and, and, and beat them 4-2. I think, Tim, that game was maybe a little bit too comfortable, um, given their stature and how highly they're, they're ranked. Would you agree? I don't, I don't think it was as comfortable as the 4-2 four four scoreline uh, reflects. Um, as, as soon as they kicked off, you could see, wow, this is a good team. They were they were they were strong. They were quick. Uh, they were pinging the ball about. You know, one two touches, and they looked a really good side. And um, they opened us up within 15 minutes with a beautiful move. And uh, I thought, oh, here here we go. We're going to get stuffed here. I really did. I thought we were going to get a run around. But full credit to our guys. They put in a fantastic performance. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, we thoroughly deserved to win. Um, we, we, you know, we rode our luck a bit. They had a few chances, but uh, so did we. we. We could have extended. So um, for us to be a, a T3 side, professional, amazing, amazing performance. And, uh, you know, we, we've got players there. You can see clearly are good enough to play T3. 100%. We've got sort of a, a spine of the team that are good enough to play. There's a few not good enough. And, and you know, they, they sort of stand out. We know which ones aren't good enough now. But we've got a nucleus of a side that can compete, I think, in T3. I mean, this is a top T3 side. They finished second uh, in, uh, in their division. So it's not sort of an average run-of-the-mill T3 side. This is a top T3 side as well. So um, I think we can more than hold our own in a T3 in the T3 division. 100%. I'm, I'm not going to uh, you know ask you to kind of drill down and do a post mortem for us on, on, on any of the games, but uh, you know I know that you 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 obviously watch um, as, as often as you can and you, you you keep abreast of what's going on at the club, obviously given our close relationship. Have you been impressed, the bits that you've seen in terms of the quality that we've got at Futari United, given the fact that we're only six months old, you know, and we, we play in as an amateur team in, in, in Thailand? Well, that, yeah. well that's, a, that's a thing. It's largely unknown. Like, you, you don't know what to expect. And then the first time that you see the side play, you're like, okay, there's obviously some fundamental fundamentals that are, that are good. Like they're, they actually know what they're doing. It's not, it's not a clown show. Like, you know, maybe some people might assume, right. Because of 
where they play and not only that the division that they're in and the fact that they're playing up to that competition and even even in the league as well when you have games in hand and you're right there at the top it's it's just really impressive and then on top of it the the confidence you can get from the signings that have come in as well I think there's just so many different things that you could point and look at it like this is a professional club now because if you're in your first test, right? Because sometimes you play down to the level of your competition. They were playing up to the competition and they were outplaying them. Four goals against a side like that says a lot. And that was their first experience against them. I'm sure the side that they played, obviously seen plenty of other sides similar to Futera, but Futera never saw anything like that. And yet they still won. And I think that speaks volumes as to where they're at because six months, I, I know babies younger than the club at this point so like that's it's it says a lot um as to where they're at so I, I can't help but be impressed every time i watch it. and obviously it's a spectacle too it's a it's a lot of fun no yeah it is it is certainly tim after the the bangkok game did you this is a side now we've got a side that's full of confidence you know young lads that are, are, are playing teams above their station supposedly did you just see the confidence within the side just kind of go up a level after that victory? And, and, and did, did you sense that some of our lads maybe didn't expect to beat Bangkok in, in, in the, way that, the way that we did? I don't, yeah, um, you could definitely sense uh, the intensity was there. Uh, the first game in the test, all our players are up for it. They've all, they all want to prove what good players they are. Um, did they expect to win? Probably not. But were they overawed? Certainly not. You know, they, they didn't stand off, at, off them. They were in. They were closing them down, harrying them. You know, and I, I thought they were I thought they were tremendous. I thought uh, Poo, uh, young Poo, I mean, for a 17-year-old, this guy is, I mean, he's different gravy. This kid's going to go a long way, I think. I think he's a tremendous... For me, he is our sort of uh, jewel in the crown. I think he's our best player. Uh, a lot of people say Jew, but for me, I, I think Pooh's a fantastic player. Really good player. No, no, he is. We certainly do have some, some talented players within the ranks. Um, Martino, uh, in terms of like, because being an American, you know, stateside, you guys um, are, you, you maybe don't get to see as many kind of giant killings because of the way the league system works there. It's very closed off, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure if, if in America you have like your own version of the, the FA Cup, but just to kind of bring people up to speed um, who, who are watching this that may be thinking, well, what is the test? The test is an opportunity for us to pit ourselves against sides better than us. If we win, we go up a, a division and play a team in the, in the side above. So this team, Bangkok FC, as we mentioned, uh, we're in uh, T3. That's four leagues above. Now we've beat them. We're going to look for a side in, in T2. These are professional teams to, to pit ourselves against. Um, what do you, Martina, what do you make of that concept of the test? Obviously, if we lose the game as well, we, we get relegated. Again, that's not something that the MLS clubs are, are, uh, are used to, is it? They, they can't get relegated if, if, if I'm, I might be, I may be wrong on that. No, um, no. But yeah, no, what, what do you think of the concept, mate? What did you, uh, is it something that excites you as, as a football? It's, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, listen, any, any time, a lot of, well, so for a lot of Americans, main introductory to the sport comes through the world cup. So anytime they see single elimination in the knockout stages or whatever, um, that's that kind of test. And they see the U S go up against sides that are just miles and miles ahead. And so they know how difficult it is sometimes. And even one of the more popular competition, the most popular annual competition, I would say in America is March Madness, which is college basketball. And that's really, you could take a middle of the road university team, right? Cause I, I, I know some of the lingo. So a middle of the road university team will play up against to some of the best of the best, you know, if you ever heard of Duke University and, and some of these other schools where they produce all these juggernaut players and they knock them off, but they get one opportunity and then they move on and, and gradually it's tougher. I think it's great because in this sport of football, you just need one chance sometimes and that's it. And then you can advance and, and, and it doesn't matter how you play. And I always like to think of Tahiti facing off in uh, the Confederations Cup, I think it was 2013, right? Um, where they had the one goal in the whole competition, they're facing off against Spain, which is the greatest national team of all time. And 
And you're seeing like on some level, if Tahiti, which has part-time employees and, and the others play professionally from time to time, can go up against Spain, then why can't Futera do what they're doing in Thailand? And, and I think that's what's so great about it because it, I wouldn't be shocked if they go all the way with this. This is like, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's impossible. Just put up four against the side that's four levels higher. Who's to say that they can't grind out something that's too nil, right? I, I, I think it's, it's certainly a possibility. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, I'm, again, you know, I, I, we're all kind of very impressed by by the way that this side applies itself as well. You know, we're, we're a young team. I think that I think that actually helps us in the test because I sense that these young players they play with less fear. They don't overthink things as much, um, and I think that does bring its uh, its benefits for sure. So moving on then to the league campaign. Um, uh, Primera with the opposition on Sunday. Tim, have I, have I pronounced that correctly? Yeah, Primera. Oh, good. Yeah, That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Primera. Okay, Primera one. Futera United three. Two goals from uh, everybody's favourite player, Gail Bassana. Uh, Martino, are you are you you seen much of of Gail? Are, are you are you a big Gail Bassana fan? His 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 fan club is really growing quite rapidly. It's a bit well. That, well, that's what I was gonna say. He was an instant star. I mean, just <laughs> the, the the first thing he's like for me, he's kind of like the poster boy of the club at this point. Yes, yeah. Because no, for, no, 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 <laughs> don't say that. I, hey, he, hey he, just hear me out for a second. Be, he sits behind me. I've got to listen to him all week. <laughs> he works. He works for Futara as well, Martino. Just incidentally, so he's well. In just the, well, just uh, for me, he's synonymous with the jersey. You know, kind of <laughs> like any any time, and I know I know Tim probably is it even more <laughs> than me saying that, but I, I really do. Just any time with proper football and and all of our social media channels, like he is the guy that we see put up, whether it's on on stories or sharing how beautiful the kid is and all those other things. It's you know, clubs these days are, are they're modernized for a reason. It's not just about what you see on the pitch; it's everything. And sometimes you need a face like with Charlotte FC in the States for MLS, Christian Fuchs, who played at Leicester City. Like, that's mm. someone you need a face to the club, like when David Beckham's bringing in Higuain to enter Miami. I mean, whether or not we all agree with that type of move, it's it's something that that's more of like a statement. And I think that just gives the team more confidence. I, I would say I'm obviously not there. I'm not in the know like Tim is. But no. – um, you know, you can just kind of get that sense on the outside looking in. And I think that's important because when you're trying to get eyeballs on a squad like this, it it only brings more validity to it. Yeah, no, he's a good lad. He is a good lad, Gail. He's uh he gets a fair bit of stick off us, but he uh he's a good lad and he's and he's scoring goals. At the end of the day, if he keeps scoring goals, we're we're running out of ammunition. We really are. But we still mention a few misses. Yeah, he's one of them. He's one of them forwards, isn't he? Where sometimes I think he converts the harder chances. Um, mm. Is that fair, Tim? You know, sometimes you, you think you should really score that Gale, and he doesn't, and then he scores a goal that I'm like, that he shouldn't have scored that one. You know, is that is that a fair observation? Yeah, I think he's a good player. He's uh, he's he's quick. He's direct. He's strong. He's quite he's quite short and stocky, and he's strong. He's got that low center of gravity. And um, yeah, yeah, he's good. He's good for us. He's a good. Um, he gets on well with the Thai guys, so uh, he's a good in for us. You know, he, he lets us know what's going on at the club. So uh, he, he's been really good for us. And uh, long, I mean, I, I think he's second top scorer now in the division. So um, you know, he, he's done really well for us. And uh, him on one side, Bank on the other side, we, we got a lot of pace, and we caused teams a lot of problems. Well, yes, no, you see, you, you do see that. Um, he's going to love this, by the way, isn't he? He's had Martino make a comparison with David Beckham uh, to get yep. on it, and um, we're 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 loosely, about, <laughs> we're, loosely. <laughs> and we're, we're talking about him being, you know, the, the league's um, second highest goal scorer. Incidentally, Martino, this is a lovely little Futari United side story, but Gail's um, mother is 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 on Twitter and she interacts with everything, you know, with regards to the club. Very proud mother. 
um, as as, uh, as as you would expect, and she's kind of becoming a bit of, a bit of a cheerleader for us on uh, on on Twitter. So that's lovely. But yeah, hopefully the golden boot for for Gail. And um, just on that game, then, um, Primera, the, the game we went into this one. I think I felt like everyone kind of expected us to win the game. But the first half, we had this thing, Martino, and, and Tim can elaborate on this, where sometimes in some games we just are a little bit slow to, to get going, aren't we, Tim? And you sit there and you wonder if, you know, you wonder if this is going to be the game where we're going to, be, you know, we're going to come a little bit unstuck. But that wasn't the case in this one. But Tim, talk about how how we started the game. What were your what were your observations from the from the yeah. Start? Um. To be fair, they, they sat back. Um, they weren't very adventurous. Uh, they let us have the ball. We moved it very slow. We didn't move them around. You know, we didn't look like we were going to break them down. You need to inject that little bit of pace to, you know, to create the space or get round the sides. But it, 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 had, uh, it had me thinking of the similar game where I thought we, we dominate possession without really looking like uh, scoring. Um, but then, um, obviously, Gail pops up with a nice finish. So, uh, at 1-0, the game changes. They've got to come out. And uh, to be fair, credit to them, uh, I thought they had a bit... They had a go in the second half. They were, uh, you know, they, they were pressing. And um, it wasn't until we got the second and the third goal, goal that I, I felt quite comfortable. I mean, it was a it was a stinker of a pitch. I mean, the corners were were, were pretty much underwater. Uh, it wasn't the best surface to try and play football. Um, so it, we sort of had to grind out the result at the end of the day. Um, but it was good, you know. It was a bit of a bit of a fierce battle in the second half. A few few challenges left in, which is always good to see. We like a bit of that. A little bit of an altercation on the touchline and. Uh, which brought uh, the coaches standing up, which was not, which I haven't seen really, because they're usually very quiet on the touchline. That was the first time I've seen any real passion from uh, from our coaches, and it, it was nice to see. But I mean, at the end of the day, we we were well worth our three-one victory. We we were much the better side. Um, I tell you what, it is though. Um, in Thailand, we I think we're known as the foreign side. So we're the team everybody wants to beat. Uh, we've got a bit of a reputation in this BPL league now. Uh, we're, we're making waves and, and people want to beat us <laughs> or they, they don't want to get spanked by us anyway. So they're not going to come out and be very adventurous. They don't want to be uh, letting in 13 goals. So they're going to play very cautious against us. And... Um, they don't want to lose to us. They really don't. And uh, if they beat us, I dread to think what, what's going to happen when we if we do lose in this BPL. I think it'll be a carnival because um, we are the foreign side and we are the team to beat. We really are. Farang, they call us. That's what they call foreign people in Thailand, Farang. And we're the Farang side that they want to beat. Well, that's, 100%. that's funny you said it because, I mean, most of the side is still made up of, of, of Thais. Um, Martino, what yeah. do you think to this this thing of like um, us being the the side to to beat uh, out there? You know, could, could, can you uh, can you can you understand that given what we're doing? Yeah, it's like it's like Leipzig in Germany. There you go. There you I go. mean, they're just, just like you know, they're in Germany, but they're not. So it's they might they might as well just be considered that. But you know what? That's a that's a great target to have on your back because you keep focus on a consistent basis. And and what Tim was saying, I think it's kind of a negative for some sites because they don't want to get battered by us. Fine. Then you're probably not playing the game that you want to play, because if you're not playing the style that you want, then then who's to say that you're great on a low block? Because if, if you're used to playing more open and pressing higher and then you switch up the way you play, then your whole ideology is flipped upside down. And that's probably the last thing you want in this sport. So for me, it's, it's fine. Bring it on. If there's going to be a target on, on our back, regardless, like might as well just have 137 on the front then and, and, and see if you could stop them. Because I mean, that, that's, that's the great thing though, because I remember, I think it might've been you, Adam, in our WhatsApp chat when you said, yeah, we just battered aside 14 nil or whatever the score was. 
and then we expect to to beat down this next side and then i think it was it was it was a low scoring match and but that's the beauty of it right is that okay it's great that we did 13 or 14 nil but now we have to have that consistency over the course of time and 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 that obviously comes with it like six months old is six months old like it's gonna happen so i mean again listen what whatever happens more eyeballs on the club is is only a good thing in my eyes so so yeah. be it. It's, it's a good opportunity for these young guys. You know, they, they, they got the eyes of the world uh, on them. And I, I think they're starting to understand that, that, you know, that they have a lot of people all over the world watching them. Um, and it is a great opportunity for them. They can make a name for themselves, really can. Yeah, um, they, they, they certainly can, and some of them already are. I mean, Martina, who... who... Gail aside, as we've already sang his praises enough, um, are there any other players that, that you like or that have stood out to you from the, the you know the, the the name is going to escape me. Um, so apologies in advance, but our right back is is one of our John. favorites. Yeah, John. I mean, John. I love the modernized fullback that is pacey and, and just constantly wants to create chaos up front and, and just consistently pushing them. And th- and that's what you need. Like that's you know like that's the way football is played these days. It's, it's not always about like back in the eighties or even the nineties or early two thousands where on, on occasion you want him pushing up, but the way it goes today, all the top fullbacks that you could think of in Europe do what they push the ball forward, they create chances. And that's kind of what we have um, with him. So for me, I always watch that right side when we're playing and, and that's just, that's just a guilty pleasure of mine. There is some inconsistency there, I will say, but that happens. That comes with the territory. But I personally, that's that's my favorite to to watch. What He's a big favorite, John. Yeah, it's going to elaborate on John a little bit more for us, Tim. Um, I, he's an intelligent player. Um, I'm, I think he's our best centre back as well. Uh, him and Tuit, I, I I class them as our best centre back pairing. Um, which is a shame because we lose him at right back. And uh, I think in our league, he's good to have a right back because of his attacking prowess. But say in the test, he's our best centre back. So we need him. We need our best two in the middle. I mean, they're both quick. Um, they both can use the ball well. Um, and then we put uh, Pang at right back and he's, he's a hell of a player. Not, he hasn't got the attacking abilities as John, but as defenders go, he, oh, you wouldn't get past him. He's a, he's a tremendous player. Tim, it was a bit of a, a patched up side for a prime era. Um, yeah. What did you think to some of the lads that, that came in from, from the cold, so to speak? Um, yeah, the, do you know the problem is we got such a young side. We got like three 17-year-olds and... Obviously, they're still at they're still at college, so they have college commitments at the moment. So we had Save, Katang, and Pooh all out with college commitments. So uh, it's quite difficult. Um, who came in? Let me see. Um, I, I, you know, I like New. I like New at centre back. I thought he he, he did okay. Um, Mai came back after a long injury. But it looks like he's done his knee again, so that could be a problem. Um, we're back to that problem now again, Adam. We're, uh, we're lacking a centre-forward, I think. Um, we thought we had the answer of the big centre-forward who was going to hold the ball up. But it looks like we're, we're looking for a new one again. So, um, you know, we, we got this uh, guy who trialled uh, in the Bangkok game, a uh, young Thai guy, and he's quick and strong. He may well be the answer. He may well be the answer. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think we need a, a Thai guy up front because um, he can play then in, uh, in the TA games next year. Obviously, the foreigners weren't allowed to play. Um, so I think we need a, a, a strong Thai centre forward because, uh, I mean, me and you have been going on about this all season, haven't we? We want, we want, a, we want a centre forward. We thought we had one, but no, no, not he wasn't. He, no, nah, he wasn't. He he wasn't right for our club, Adam. He yeah. didn't fit. 
he didn't fit the ethos of Futura United. Uh, we yeah. are a we're a democratic community run club. We don't want any big time Charlie playing up front for us who thinks he's bigger than the club. So, you know, I'm not I'm not begrudging the guy going off to do what he wants, but there's ways there's ways to do it. Just so, before just there is, there is just before we, we wrap up, Martina, because I don't want to keep you for too long. Um Tim is obviously talking about Tishan Hanley there. Uh, we will release a statement on that. I think Mark's going to put something together later this week just to, to you know, to officially fill the community in on the status of, of Tishan, um, if you still wondered. Um, anyway, Martino, just before you go, uh, I'm really intrigued to just kind of get the lowdown from your side at, at proper football at slash 1.37pm. Um, it'd be really nice to, to kind of hear how excited you guys are about what we're doing. I mean, I assume you are, given the fact that we've we've embraced it the way that we have. Um, but yeah, you know, what, what's uh, what's kind of getting you excited over there right now about what we're doing with Futeri United, you know, and how we're utilising the, the technology behind the football club as well? I, th- I think it's the perfect direction for the the age of the club on how old it is and and realising and embracing the era that it's starting in instead of, you know, like going back to that traditional style, we're a football club, we're run this way, and then we're just going to play games and we're not going to try and interact and, and, and do all these different for, for us. It's so much fun because of everyone that's interested in web three and all those stuff, because they just love football as well. And crossing those two paths is a lot of fun because in a sense, it's almost like a, like a cult following, following Futera, right? Because there's a good amount of people that know it within the circles, but if you know it, you probably follow it passionately because almost every single time we post something on Twitter or Instagram or wherever else, there's that interaction there and it's that connection between the fan and, and the players and just the results because it's it's slowly gaining steam right now because we're kind of in the home stretch of like the realization is promotion is drawing near. And, that, and that's what everyone's excited about because why not during these times want to celebrate something? Because, because there's been, you know, you could say all the negativity in the world about a plethora of things, but Futera is one of those places that you can go to and say, all right, it's great. The commentary is unique, right? The, the representation, the, the shirt sponsor. I mean, even, even in a sense, there's, they're villains in a way, depending on who you talk to. Meanwhile, we're just... Nice guys on a Zoom call right now, just trying to see if we can get promoted. Um, for us, it's just exciting in, in general because of the, the system as well. It's just not the same over here in, in the States. In the States, it's you pay $300 million to get into MLS, and then you're there. With Futera, it's we have kids that have to show up to economic, uh, like 305 class, Right. I'm not sure what they study at their college. Uh, and then and then next thing you know, you're playing a side that's four divisions higher. And, and to me, that's just it's controlled chaos in a sense. And it's just exciting because it's just unique. There's I, I, I can't think of anything else like it. I, and, and even if I did, I'm sure it's still not the same because it's not my club at the end of the day. So, yeah. It's something as a football fan very romantic about about the concept. And um, guys, apologies if you've been getting plenty of background noise. I I my office is on an industrial estate. There's beeping all sorts. It's about 400 degrees in Britain today, so it's very very warm. And I've had to have the windows open. So my apologies if you have been picking up background noise. Hopefully the the audio is fine and you've heard everything, Martino and Tim and maybe I have, have said. Um, so yeah, gents, well, thank you very much, Martino, for, for swinging by. Uh, some some great observations on Futeria United. It's it's wonderful to have you you with us. Um, really kind of infused and excited to see where we can take the relationship. Tim, as always, Oracle, thank you for your uh, insight. And um, let's pick up again. We don't know if we've got a game this weekend. That's yet to be determined. Um, I, think, we'll have... I think we have. I think we, we have. have. And we're just great. waiting for uh, confirmation of uh, the team. Great. Cool. Okay. So we're waiting on confirmation of who it is we're playing this yeah. weekend. Um, as always, remember, interact uh, with the, the channel. Like, share, subscribe. Do, do, do all of those nice things and head into the Discord. Follow us on Twitter. And also get over and check out what proper football are doing with 1.37 p.m. as well. All right, guys, I'm going to go before it gets even more noisy in the background. But thanks for joining us. I'll see you soon. See you later. Bye-bye.